Yeah, I need you on the daily, daily. Couple weeks and I'd go crazy, crazy. Yeah, I need you on the regular, the regular. Yeah, I need you. Yeah, I'm telling ya, I'm telling ya. Yeah, I need you on the daily, daily. Hi, welcome to Divas with Debbie. So today we're looking at Isaiah 30, and it is so rich in content. So I'm gonna jump right in. Uh, the first verse we sort of get a framework for how God is going to address Israel during this chapter. Um, he says, Ah, stubborn children, declares the Lord, verse 1, who carry out a plan but not mine, who make an alliance but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, who set out to go to Egypt without asking for my direction to take refuge in the protection of Pharaoh and to seek shelter in the shadow of Egypt. And we, we understand later on, well, actually in this verse, one, Israel is a stubborn child, is likened to a stubborn child, you know, trying to be independent, carrying out their own plan that's not God's plan, taking things into their own hands and not asking for direction from God and going to something else for protection. Um... And I know we can all just picture a stubborn child, whether it was us or someone we knew, like the tantrum in the middle of the grocery store, whatever it may be, we can picture it. Keep that image in your mind. Later, verse 9, it says, For they are a rebellious people, lying children, children unwilling to hear the instruction of the Lord. And just with that, you know, dynamic, we understand, okay, the parent knows best. The parent has the maturity and the wisdom and the the fullness of, they understand more than the child. But the child is rebellious and they think they know what's best. But they don't. And ultimately, God says, you know, like, well, if they want to go to Egypt, sure, go to Egypt. I'm going to thwart their plans and it's not going to work out because they have forgotten that I am their refuge. I am the solution to their problem. And one of the things he addresses is their sin. It says, like, you despise this word. Like, you despise the word of God. You'd rather have, verse 10, like, smooth things and, uh, they have left the way of God. It says, verse 11, leave the way, turn aside from the path. Let us hear no more about the Holy One of Israel. They've clearly directly rejected God, rejected his prophets, and they just want to hear nice things. Um, they despise the word of God. And verse 12 emphasizes that they trust in oppression and perverseness and rely on them. Like that is what they trust in. And you have to remember, they're going back to Egypt, which, which is the exact place where they, where God like brought them out of, you know, they're going back to their captors saying, it's going to be better to be slaves, to be oppressed, than to be dependent on the Lord when the circumstances look so dire. They've totally forgotten that God delivered them from that, did miraculous a miraculous deliverance. They're going right back to their oppression, their slavery, and depending on that, saying this is the solution. We figured it out. Um, and he talks about this particular sin, and he likens it to a breach in a high wall, bulging out, about to collapse, whose breaking comes suddenly in an instant. And he talks about how, like, it's shattered so much, there's not even anything you can use from the wall that you can, like, scoop things up with. Nothing. And, you know, I was thinking about that image of, like, a crack in the wall and how it's just a matter of time before it crumbles. Sin ruins the integrity of our lives. <laughs> um, it's easy to 
picture sin in different ways. Scripture gives us many different images. And we we learned a couple days ago, you know, about sin kind of like being, like us being like a prostitute as we have a loving husband, but we decide to give ourselves away to something else, even though we're in a covenant and it's beautiful and fabulous. <laughs> we are giving ourselves away. Here we see it as just something that just ruins the integrity and is like we're waiting for destruction to come and it's self-inflicted. Um, so with that, God has an answer that just hit me afresh during this uh, quarantine season. Verse 15, it says, For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in trust shall be your strength. But you were unwilling. God has the answer to them, and they just don't want to hear it. And the answer is, repent, like return, repent, come back to me, and rest in me. And you're going to be okay. Like, chillax and trust in me, and you're going to be okay. And it says, and, and trust shall be your strength. You know, waiting on the Lord is going to give them the strength. And allowing the Lord to do what they can't do. But they'd rather, like stubborn children, take things into their own hands. And I feel like part of that is just a message to us right now. Like, a lot of us feel like we can solve this problem. And actually, probably more people feel like they can't. Like me. Like you can do nothing. Uh, but that's not true. As we repent, return rest, return to the Lord, and trust in Him, we're going to be strengthened by that. Um, and it's going to be a testimony to other people, too. Um, so, there's that. And then he jumps into, you know, this really fascinating section. I'm so drawn to it. Verse 18, Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. God is waiting to be gracious to us. What is he waiting on is like the question that comes. Like God isn't constrained by time. But we know that he longs to be in relationship with us. He's waiting for that return. He's not going to do anything. Yeah, like he, he wants us to, sorry, <laughs> he wants us to come to him. Um, and he's waiting to be gracious to us. We think when we come to him, he's going to come with a rod and just, you know, like, mm. no, he's waiting to give us grace. But we need that. He needs that repentant heart. Therefore, he exalts himself to show mercy to you. He's a God of justice. Yes, we know that. He's a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. I think that too says like, you know what? God's going to, his plan is good. He's a God of justice. He's going to bring what he's going to bring. <laughs> you know, he's going to bring justice. We don't have to take vengeance into our own hands, justice into our own hands. We just have to trust him, that key word of trust. And it just gives us this glimpse of heaven. But I think it's also of the kingdom of heaven, which Jesus brought down here too. Um, it says, for a people shall dwell in Zion, like God's holy mountain, in, is, in Jerusalem. You shall weep no more. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. As soon as he hears it, he answers you. Look at that immediacy when as soon as God hears your, your prayer, he's answering it already. Uh, verse 20, And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore. But your eyes shall see your teacher, and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. And when you turn to the right or to the left, then you will defile your carved idols, overlaid with silver and gold, metal images, 
sorry, time. <laughs> you will scatter them as unclean things. You will say to them, be gone. Ah, oh, there's so much here. So, um, first off, many thought, verse 20. Uh, the Lord gives you the bread at of adversity and the water of affliction you know there's something nourishing about adversity and affliction and they're a gift from god it doesn't make sense to wrap my head mind around it but oftentimes it's the trials that refine that strengthen that um purify our faith and increase our dependence on him and and it comes with a teacher. <laughs> you know, these hard trials that are bread and water of adversity and affliction come with a capital T teacher. And I am confident this is Jesus. You know, your teacher will not hide himself anymore, but your eyes shall see your teacher. And it talks about how the teacher will say, like, this is the way. Walk in it you know, as you're walking. And I think it's a mix of, you know, the Holy Spirit who enlightens our eyes as we read scripture and gives us conviction and shows us how to, uh, guides us as we walk through life. Um, but it's also, you know, echoing John 14, 6, where it says, from Jesus's words, he says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Wow. And then it talks about Verse 22, then you will defile your carved idols overlaid with silver and your gold metal images. You will scatter them as unclean things and you will say to them, be gone. And there's this concept of the expulsive power of a new affection, which is like when you love something, it's easier to give up something. You know, just like when you're in love or you're dating someone and they kind of overtake, sorry for the fun, they overtake your schedule. Um, then, sorry, this is one of the first times I've done that, but it's so bright. There we go. Um, yeah, so with the expulsive power of a new affection, what was getting your time and your affection and your priority and your focus is expelled. And this is perfect here, a perfect way to understand the the people scattering their idols because it has nothing to do with God saying, like, throw out your idols. It was first them being drawn to him, being drawn back to God, um, having their eyes and ears open to the word of God and being taught by the word of God. And then, verse 20, then they throw out their idols and say, um, you're of no use to me. <laughs> I see you for what you are. You have no use to me. And this new affection has expelled an old affection and replaced it. Um, so we have that moment. Um, and then God talks about how he's just going to bring abundant life to Jerusalem. It's lush. It's looking very vibrant and full of life. And verse 26 talks about how like the light of the moon is going to be like the sun and the sun is going to be sevenfold. And we know later in Revelation that God likens himself to the sun saying like, I will be your son. You, ha you will have no need for the sun. Um, and then we do get this glimpse of the judgment of God. Um, but sorry, before that, verse 26 says, In the day when the Lord binds up the brokenness of his people, heals the wounds inflicted by his blow. You know, God's just going to wrap them up and bind them and heal them. And simultaneously, there's this judgment happening um, that it talks about that's sifting the nations. And it's sort of this strange image where we have, you know, this song of the night when the holy feast is kept in gladness of heart that the people of God are rejoicing. They're worshiping. They're playing music on the mountain of God, the rock of Israel. And simultaneously, the world is hearing the majestic, majestic voice of God, verse 30. But it's coming with his wrath, too. And it's terrifying the world. Um, it's kind of this weird image going on with two things happening at once. Um, 
but we understand that God is a God of justice and he's going to bring justice to to not bring justice would be contrary to his character um, but he's also a God of mercy and he's in in Jesus he's fulfilling both of those at the same time um, he's offered a way to him saying I'm the way the truth the life no one gets to the Father except through me. He's, there's a way offered to get to the Father, but only for those who listen and aren't like stubborn children doing their own way. When we repent and return to the Lord, we are um, drawn into his presence. And there are consequences for not doing that, which is hard to wrap our minds around sometimes. But um, what do you think? Isn't it just so fascinating? Um, I'm so drawn to this. So maybe just a final thought to end on is return to the Lord. Take this time to repent. Return to the Lord and rest in Him. And He's going to be your salvation. Like, be still and trust in Him, and He's going to be your strength. That's all taken from verse 15. So that's it. Have a great day. Bye.